Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us on Get It Growing for, from the Lafayette Parish Master Gardeners. Today we're going to have um, a two whammy surprise for everyone. We are honored to have our um, county agent, Gerald Roberts, with us, who's going to be addressing some issues that the community has been asking us about. How do you become a master gardener? What's involved in the program? And um, what's new and what's going to happen the days that we're going to have the program? And then after that, uh, he and I like to interact anyway, and I'm going to be uh, demonstrating some container gardening. Okay, Gerald? Oh, by the way, I am Teresa Guidry. And um, Gerald and I were just talking about, okay, we need to introduce each other. So, so Miss Teresa Guidry, uh, <laughs> better known as Miss T, who is uh, a graduate of the first Master Gardener's class in Lafayette, uh, 1998, and who is an avid Master Gardener, very energetic and enthusiastic, and, and really enjoys uh, sharing information with people so that they can become more enriched in their area of interest in horticulture. Thank you very much, Gerald. So we'll go ahead now and begin with uh, Gerald addressing us and letting us know uh, a little bit of what's new with the Master Gardener program. Uh, I'm here today and, and, and very pleased to uh, talk about the upcoming Master Gardener's class for uh, 2010. Uh, as you all know, every year we have Master Gardener's classes that are offered uh, for those people that may be interested in becoming Master Gardeners. The classes are a joint effort between the LSU Ag Center, Lafayette Parish Master Gardeners, and ULL. Uh, in fact, the classes are held at the ULL Iron Nelson's Horticulture Building, and the classes will be held uh, on Thursdays of each week. Not, Not Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Okay. Thursdays then. of each week. That's new. Uh, between the hours of uh, 8.45 and 3 p.m. Okay. Uh, they began on August 18th, Thursday, August 18th, and run through November uh, 19th, which is also a Thursday. Okay. Uh, the cost uh, uh, per class yeah. is, is $135. What does that include? Jim? That includes a manual, a badge, a certificate. Uh, and a wealth of education. And a wealth of education and information that uh, you're going to be surprised at how much you're going to grow. Uh, we bring in speakers uh, from around the state that are experts in their field, and they provide information that helps master gardeners to grow uh, in the area of horticulture. And uh, nine times out of ten, what happens afterward is that you're willing to share. Right. Tell uh, me that about mm -hmm. what's expected of once you go through the program and uh, you've uh, earned the certificate. What now is expected if I am a brand new master gardener? Okay. What we ask is that uh, once you complete the class mm -hmm. that you've sure. got up to one year to uh, volunteer about 40 hours. Okay. Uh, generally that the opportunities are going to come from uh, workshops or uh, activities Work, yes. that uh, the master gardeners... Now, that's only the first year. Right, right. That's 40 hours, hours. volunteer, right. and then uh, we the have... The second year, well, or if Also, want... let's say the first year, also about the, um, the uh, calling at the office. We answer right. the phone to help right. the county agent. Right. And how many hours is that? 20. 20 uh, hours. Tw uh, no, no, uh, uh, six hours. Six hours, right. Six yes, hours. Six yeah. hours. Don't be don't scared, be scared. <laughs> folks. It's only six hours mm -hmm. to answer the, the phone. phone. For a whole year, you have right. only six hours. And now we're making it to where it's even easier for the master gardeners to where their cell phones are all so uh, prevalent around us. We've decided that um, not everyone has the opportunity to be in the working environment in an office to answer for the county agent. So y'all have made it easier on us on that part to say, okay, then you can answer the phone as long as when the uh, Samantha at the office answers and it's an incoming call for a master gardener or a county agent, they immediately have to call and give them the number to call you wherever you are with your cell phone. So that really has helped us. That's really helped That's us, helped Ms. Ms. T. It's, oh, it's a it's tremendous one, help. Wonderful. With some of the budget issues that the LSU Ag Center uh, is uh, having to deal with, uh, the Master Gardeners uh, play a key role in allowing us to get information out. That's right. Uh, you know, so after the training, you know, uh, you know, the LSU Ag Center is 
the, the mission is to provide uh, research-based information to people right. so that they can make informed decisions. Right. So once the master gardeners are trained, they play a key role in allowing us to meet the mission of the LSU Ag Center. Thank you very much. And also, let's not forget about our six-hour educational hours, right. which we are uh, obligated to have. And that's from the first year till whenever. But um, that first year encompasses, it seems like a lot, 40 hours. But then after that, when you're starting on your second year and on, uh, then it makes it so much easier because all you have to fulfill is 20 volunteer hours, six hours uh, for the education and six hours for the phone duty. Y'all have really made it uh, helpful for us and we enjoy helping the county agents. Well, let me just add that anyone with an interest uh, in becoming a master gardener, uh, talk to other master gardeners that are already in it. I mean, the fact that you get an opportunity to interact with people that share your interests. That's right. And people that share their experiences. So you even, you grow from talking to other people. But if you're interested, uh, please uh, call the office. Uh, you can get an application. We even have one of our secretaries, Ms. Karen, to actually take applications over the phone if you want to. That's and right. the application deadline is June 30th. So uh, we have the month of June. And so we, we're looking forward to a lot more applications in order for us to have a good class of master gardeners. I just think that it's going to be an overwhelming success this year. The anticipation that we always get through the summer because people are traveling, we're not sure how many we're going to have. It's always been a huge success. Yes. So um, I want to thank you for giving us that bit of information. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to that before you can, you're going to get started in helping me? Okay, fantastic. Uh, I just wanted to make one point sure. uh, relative to a lot of calls that we're getting about people that's riding around and seeing pine trees, brown, and uh, cypress oh, trees that are scorched, have a scorched look. Yes. And most people think it's because of the drought that the trees are dying. But it's actually from the feeding of a beetle called a pine calaspis beetle. Oh my that, word. That, that, that feed on the pine needles and on the cypress trees, and it turns them brown. And, and it gives the appearance that they're dying, but they're not. Oh, they're not they're dying. They're not dying. No, okay. we, we, we see this every year at some point. And generally, by the end of the summer, the trees uh, green back up. And it's not a problem. So it's not to worry. Not to worry. And there's no need to worry Spray. about spraying. Oh, great. Because it's not economically feasible. And most people don't have the equipment to spray large trees anyway. That's right. But then it's not needed. The trees are going to come back. So don't panic. Good. Good. Anything else uh, as far as the landscaping or gardening that you uh, need to add, Gerald? One thing that I might add is that, you know, anytime we get into the summer months, uh, as far as lawns are concerned, uh, people uh, many times want to water their lawns. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing right. that they need to understand is that whatever watering schedule the municipalities oh, have, right. have, follow the water, watering schedule. Yes. The second thing is it's more beneficial to your lawns to water it once or twice a week for long periods of time than to get out there and water just a little bit every day. That's right. You know, so. What about the cutting of the grass, Gerald? Mm -hmm. That's a good uh, subject I yeah. wanted to tap on. A lot of people have called us, well, what's the normal height for cutting St. Augustine, for instance? That's probably one of the, 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 the worst things that people do with St. Augustine is mm -hmm. cut it too short. Too short. Too short because they want to cut down on the number of times they have to mow. Right. And what they're done is actually hurting the grass. Wow. You know, two and a half, three inches, no shorter than two and a half inches, preferably at three inches. Okay. If you're in shade where the grass is stressed or in competition with, from large trees and shade, you, it's even more critical that you raise that more and height a little even okay. higher. What about the other grasses? Would you like well, to do yeah, Bermuda? Or? Bermuda, uh, anywhere from an inch, inch and a half. Uh, Bermuda thrives at a lower a more in height than St. Augustine. Okay. Well, I know that everyone really appreciates Gerald coming in today, and I don't want anyone to ever stop and hesitate to wonder, well, should I call the county agent or should I call a master gardener? Because that's what we're here for. We're here to serve the community, and hopefully we can help you get through the long, hot summer. Exactly. Well, we're going to have fun right now. We're going to get started on container gardening. 
Uh, I don't know if Gerald mentions, but I do teach, uh, of course, you've met me in the past where I'll teach uh, square foot gardening. I speak on different topics. I'm also a floral designer. I'll speak on flower arranging from your garden. But today we're going to speak on container gardening, which has been addressed on many, many occasions. And I love speaking about this because that's one of my passions right now. So many people are living in small uh, areas, condos and uh, apartment dwellings, and they don't have the big uh, property lot they used to. Sure, just because so, you don't have the right. available land, that's that correct. does not mean that you have to that's give up correct. your job gardening. And uh, this is an opportunity for them to pick up some, that's some right. tips on how to contain a garden. We're going to talk about the different first containers. There's so many different areas of container gardening that I want to hurry and get through. Uh, but this one, uh, naturally, you see it's a, a ceramic uh, container. Everything that I use always has to have holes for drainage, and if it doesn't, make sure that you have it drilled. Uh, the next common one is terracotta, which really does beautiful in the summer. And then the last one, which is real, real common that I have with me today, is a plastic. And this is one that uh, everyone needs to realize. It's, it needs to be watered a little bit more because it doesn't retain the water, but it's what you put inside the soil that can maintain that moisture. So that's really important that we, we remember that part. We're going to uh, first start uh, and by telling you what some of the things that I use up here in my, uh, in my container garden. I also use another product that's Stay Green. Uh, down here. I'm not sure if they're showing it to y'all, but I use that because it has a fabulous uh, moisture uh, wick in there called uh, um, Moisture Max, and it, and it has uh, nothing more than a, 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 a little tiny a vermiculite in it, which holds its moisture. Uh, peak humus or uh, organic humus, which uh, really keeps the soil loose and uh, friable. It's called friable. That's been fabulous for me. And then I like to use, uh, I'm going back to the old farmer uh, adage of, uh, what about manure? Well, as long as the manure is cured, and I like to use the uh, organic chicken uh, compost manure, um, all of these products are all readily available. Uh, don't forget to, there's also the uh, miracle Grow product. But make sure it has, if you're doing containers, make sure it has that marsh to guard in it. You'll see a little aqua, a little drop of water in it. So that's important. When you're uh, gardening as we are doing right now today, uh, I want you to also notice every one of my containers has um, a filament at the bottom and I uh, switched from regular screen to something called fiberglass screen, okay? It's, it's not landscape cloth and this is absolutely the best uh, material that I have found for drainage and it holds your uh, soil in there. It allows your uh, plant to breathe and uh, it also prevents uh, insects and all from entering. So I like to use this product and this is also readily available at any um, home garden center. So we're going to be doing some succulents right here, right now. But I have some one called, this is interesting because when I purchased this particular one, uh, it's called witch chain and I thought oh wow and this is interesting I thought it was real really funny and uh, this is another it's a type of sedum and so it's something simple because I have a tiny container okay so what we're going to do in the past I used to tell all of my students that we need to have uh, some uh, uh, some type of a rock or bark at the bottom for drainage and that is no longer so we have found through a test that it's better for it to be totally drainable, okay? So as long as you have a good soil, it should be fine. And then we'll go into the layer of fertilizing. I found this particular product here and I liked it because it said it was for cactus, all right? And we're going to uh, put that in, in our, our container. Okay, I'll let you hold this, Gerald. And I'm about halfway, I'm not gonna, uh, go any further but to make sure that you see it is about halfway in the container when you get to that level then I want you to add some uh, osmocote which is a time release fertilizer which a lot of people don't uh, put it at this level but I'll tell you why we do it so I'm going to sprinkle this osmocote at this level and you don't have to measure you just sprinkle it just like my mama used to do with cooking a stew or a gumbo right right 
So uh, here we are, we're ready at that level to put our, drop our plants in. And this is real important for everyone to see. When you, when you uh, take a plant out of its container, don't be afraid to open up all of the root system at the bottom, okay? So it's important that you have your gloves on and you're ready to uh, tackle the big job at hand. So what you're seeing here is all of the roots now can be able to get that spreading effect, okay? So I'm going at this level. So what happens here? Those roots are gonna be sitting right on top of that time release fertilizer. That's why I do that. And then the second plant, the sedum, will go in right next to it on the opposite side. This is one of the easiest little gardens that I do is uh, for any of the cactus or succulents. And if you keep it simple, and this is another product I like, it's organic compost. And you can purchase uh, this. I use a lot of the organic compost if I don't have the uh, organic chicken manure for me, uh, for my succulents. I like to use this product. It has a lot of sand in it and a lot of potash and it's a really good uh, medium for it. So I'll always put some of that in there. Okay, and now I'm ready for this. Gerald, I bought me some new gloves today. Especially for today. Yes, especially for today because you didn't want to see my old muddy gloves. I'm always digging in the soil. And uh, someone asked me the other day, why do you keep saying that, Miss T? Why do you say soil all the time, soil? You don't plant in the dirt? No. The first day of class, I'll uh, never forget our county agent, Denise Cummings, taught us right at the very beginning that you're always going to remember to plant in soil because you're going to be buried in dirt. That's right. Huh? Correct. So that's the yeah. difference. So if everybody just keeps in mind, you know, um, I think that uh, everybody that uh, is a, a gardener will tell you they love digging in the dirt, mm -hmm. huh? but they yeah. also love digging soil. in the soil. So um, I think I have this one just about ready. Uh, to uh, get ready for watering. As this is all complete, I'll always top dress it with a little bit more Osmocote on top of that. And then I do something on my succulents that I found really works well. I use pea gravel on the succulents, any type of a cacti. And what you're doing here is for your watering purposes, you know uh, there's a splashback. When, you, when you're watering plants, there's a lot of times that you, uh, the plants, uh, if you're hitting them a little bit too hard and you're not noticing anything like that, you'll see, uh, well, this holds everything into place. It's going to hold your soil down really good and clean and neat. And, of course, you'll see a lot of this in bonsai and uh, all kind of fragile plants. But look how beautiful this is. I don't know if you can see, but with the rock and all, it's, it's really a... a a nice display. I'll probably wait uh, a couple of weeks, a week and a half, two weeks, and then what I'll do there is start shooting it with uh, liquid fertilizer, okay, a water-soluble fertilizer, which now uh, miracle Girl came out with these little neat things, Some which I packs. love. Yeah, look Some at this, Gerald. Packs. That's right. Little mini packs. Mm -hmm. So you just mix this with one gallon of water and water accordingly. And succulents do not take much soil uh, watering, so you don't have to worry about it. Leave it, neglect it uh, about once a month, maybe give it a little bit of miracle go. And here we are with our terracotta. I love, love this potato vine. It's very, very common and very popular. It's become popular, I would say, in the last six years, that neon, and it's very popular because of its color. And the first thing I want to show you with terracotta, and I have tons of terracotta, is to make sure that all of your pots, no matter what they are, plastic, ceramic, terracotta, are immaculately clean, whether it be new or old, okay? It could be, this one's really old, and I really scrubbed it real well with a little bit of so, uh, soap and water, and I put a, a little bit of uh, Clorox in my water, because this is an old one. Is there any particular reason, Miss T, that you want to make sure that Good the pot is absolutely clean? Good question. Well, now, you taught us in our class that it keeps all of this bacteria all clean. If there's any type of um, uh, bad diseases that were infected in here, because especially terracotta, it'll adhere to it. So that keeps it all sterilized, so to speak. 
So even if I get a brand new one at the store, I still do the same procedure because you don't know how long it's right. been sitting in a warehouse. Fantastic. Okay. And so on this particular one, I use the same method. I use my little screen, my fiberglass screen on there. And on this one, I have um, a different mixture that uh, I, I mixed here. And let's see, Gerald, if you can maybe help me. We can maybe put some in here. All right. And this is a nice uh, mixture that uh, has that uh, really fine um, uh, potting mixture medium over there. That's a great, great. It has also, it has a little bit of fertilizer in it, but not much, Gerald. Is this a bag mix? Yes. Tea? And it is one of those that okay. you pick up, but it has the uh, vermiculite in it. Okay. And it's still very, very nice, light, friable. It's called friable. When you can do this, it's really good soil. It has some shavings in it. You can smell it, can't you? Right, sure. And it uh, has a little fertilizer I wish you could already. smell it because it's yeah. really nice. Makes you want to garden. Makes, makes you want to dig in the, in right. the soil. I'm going to add a little bit of this organic compost to this mixture, okay? And if you're saying, well, Miss T, how much? I can tell you, you saw how much I did. It's just a splash of it in there. And that's because this is going to be a simple method of uh, doing a, uh, just a simple pot, okay? Notice I did not put any of my uh, rock at the bottom because of that screen. That screen is going to take care of everything. I'm about three quarters on this particular one, and that's where, you remember what we talked about with the uh, roots getting in touch mm -hmm. with that Osmocote and loving every minute of it? Well, that's what we're going to do here. Sometimes at home, I found uh, that it helps also to, uh, when you're at this level and you have your uh, Osmocote in there, mm -hmm. just wet it on down. Yeah. Wet one, it down. And one other, one other thing, Ms. T, I want to make a point is that People may wonder why you're able to put the roots directly on the Osmocote. Well, That's Osmocote right. is slow release. It's not like That's triple correct. 13 or triple 8 where That's it's right. completely water soluble where you have to worry about burning Good roots. point. Yeah, Good you know, point. So that's why Osmocote is just so popular and uh, a very uh, high quality fertilizer. And you know, don't tell me that you can't garden, right? No. I was with this lady the other day and she had the prettiest fingernails. I said, buy you some nice gloves. Mm -hmm. You're going to love it. Well, she called me about a week later and she's having a ball. She's loving every minute of it. This is a great root-bound potato vine. Yes. I mean, this is so root-bound. Classic bound. example. Classic example. And, of course, the medium that they use is going to be something that's going to be uh, time to plant, I call it. It's the type of medium that says, get me out of here. So I've broken up all of this and made sure that, all, and you're not going to be tearing up those uh, roots. Don't be scared to do what I'm doing, okay? But I want you to remember to bring it up about, I'll have to come up just maybe a little bit more because I want it to sit even with my pot, okay? So I'm right there. As you can see, I'm even with the level of the pot. Well, you can't see, but believe me, it's there, right, Gerald? Right, exactly. It's there. It's good. It's there. Okay. So this is it. And pound it really, really hard. Don't be scared because you're now stabilizing everything. Okay? After you do that, go ahead. Put your osmocote, water well. Wait another week or so. Go ahead and do your wonderful miracle growth. The last thing I want to show you guys are, uh, are you ready for this? This is like phenomenal. Okay, Gerald, you need to move that. How about let's take a chair? And Fantastic. this chair, this chair was, uh, someone was throwing it away, a neighbor of mine was throwing it away, and so I did nothing more than, the seat was even gone, and this is cattle guard down here at the bottom. I did zip ties to hold it in place, okay? And uh, I sprayed, kind of full painted my plastic terracotta pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant directly in this chair, and that way it's perfect. I can move it wherever. If it's a sun-loving plant or a shade plant, plant accordingly. So uh, I think today this, this is all going in here. We're running out of time. I want to show you, though, if I don't get a, ch a chance to finish everything for you. Gerald, would you hold this one for me? Thank you. Those two are going in here. And this beautiful, beautiful shrimp plant also is going in here. 
Discolius is going in here, and all of these are fun, sun-loving plants. These far spike, everything that you see is gonna be ready for the sun at my house, okay? So this is something that anyone can do. I know that you can do this on your own at home. And uh, the main thing I want to uh, tell everyone is that container gardening is fun gardening. It's fun gardening. It's fun gardening. And I've taught children, I've taught uh, the elderly, uh, uh, they've taught me so much. And all we're trying to do is get back to giving back to the community. Exactly. So Gerald, I can't thank you enough for being with us. It was just an honor for us for you to share everything that you know and we're gonna call you. Well thank you for calling me and let me just say becoming a master gardener it would be one of the best decisions that a person could make if you have an interest in horticulture. Count Your personal County growth agent. and development is just unbelievable. That's right. Thank y'all so much for being with us. We really appreciate and have a great afternoon. Okay and uh, Miss T just to uh,